Hello, sweet friend. Thanks so much for being here today. Joining me for a very small iced coffee. Something's been mulling in my mind all day. I was, uh, I just finished karate and it was something I was just thinking over as I was going through my katas. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sit down after this and just film a quick video. So we've been talking a lot about minimalism. And one of the things that always comes up when we start talking about different subjects relating to minimalism and how to live a minimalistic lifestyle is decluttering, how we go about decluttering, what's the best way to approach decluttering. And um, the thing about it, and uh, I've watched so many things about decluttering in my own journey, in my own practice, but I find that sometimes they can be a little too rigid. A lot of these videos, a lot of the articles that are out there, they almost set it up like this step-by-step -step process of do this, um, ask yourself these questions, and then come to a conclusion and either get rid of it or keep it, but we hope you get rid of a lot. And that's fine. I think a lot of these things can be invited into our practice, but what I've found for myself is that a lot of times it's not it's not necessarily just this emotionless process and a lot of minimalists and um, books that are written by minimalists, even though there's so much good content out there, I don't want you guys to think I am um, saying this in a uh, talking it down or anything like that because I'm not. I've benefited so much, but a lot of these articles and videos can take the emotion out of decluttering and make it more of this very static yes or no question whether or not we should keep or get rid of something. Um, there's lots of different methods and what has worked for me is not just one thing. It's not a one size fits all thing. It, it just really isn't. There is emotion involved with decluttering and sometimes some of the materials out there can almost like shame us into feeling like we should not, we should feel guilty if we have emotion attached to physical objects. And I've thought about this concept a lot because on one hand, no, we shouldn't have deep sentimental, emotional attachment to a toxic level with a physical object. They're not people, they're not animals, they're not living things, a material possession. It's something we can let go of and it shouldn't be this huge apocalyptic thing if we have to let go of it or if we lose something. If you lose a valuable, even if it has sentimental value, it's not the end of the sentiment because we can still hold that value in our hearts. But the thing is, there is emotion that we have attached to material things because we are emotional beings. And I think that's something that's lost in a lot of these materials that I see published online and through videos today is that it's much of it, not all, but a lot of it seems to leave behind the idea that we are emotional beings. Of course, we're going to have emotion attached to objects and we shouldn't feel ashamed of the fact that we have emotion or a lot of sentimentality over certain things that just happen. So when I first started decluttering as I beha began my minimalist journey, I felt really bad <laughs> that <laughs> that I, I had so much um, sentimental attachment to certain things. I felt like, oh, you know, already I'm getting off on the wrong foot here because I have too much sentimental attachment to material things. And this is the whole <laughs> reason for minimalism is to not have sentimental attachment to things. But as I grew in my journey, I began to realize over the years that that's impossible. It's impossible to not have any emotion attached to things. We have emotion attached to so many things, to people, animals, places, and material things. Think of a place that you maybe visited that you have a lot of sentimental attachment to. For me, it's the Grand Canyon. I hiked to the Grand Canyon with my father. It was our 
dream that we had for so many years. And whenever I think about the Grand Canyon or look at the photos I took while we were on that overnight hike, I am just filled with emotion over it. I just get very emotional talking about it, watching video clips that I took when we were in the Grand Canyon. It just blew me away and I have so many emotions attached to that place. Now, is there anything wrong with that? No, there isn't anything wrong with that. So that doesn't simply stop at places we've been or people we love or pets that we love, animals that we love that also carries over into physical objects. And there's nothing wrong with that. The thing that we have to be careful of is making sure that it doesn't become an attachment that controls us, right? So if we have items that we are keeping out of feelings of guilt, emotions of guilt, or emotions of shame, or emotions of obligation to someone else, it's not so much do we have emotion attached to a thing and if so, that's unhealthy, let's get rid of it, let's get rid of it. No, the question we need to be asking ourselves is what kind of emotions do we have attached to that thing? Are they healthy emotions? Do they inspire us and make us feel good about ourselves? This kind of routes to, you can use, I, I love using the KonMari method, which um, Marie Kondo talks about in her book, uh, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Very good book. I recommend reading that. I read it a couple of years ago. I listened to the audiobook actually. And it is very helpful to hold something in your hands to ask yourself, does it spark joy? Because usually the answer will be pretty immediate. But beyond that concept, I think it's important to realize that sentimental attachment or emotional attachment to a thing is not bad. It's not a bad thing. We are emotional beings. So even when it comes to things like getting rid of clothes or getting rid of sentimental objects, we have to be gentle with ourselves. <laughs> you know, sometimes this decluttering concept I find from many of the things I've watched can get a little too uh, rigid and <laughs> aggressive. Whereas it doesn't, it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be an aggressive thing. It doesn't need to be a rigid thing. It can be something that we treat ourselves gently about. You know what I mean? We don't have to get rid of everything all at once. We don't have to force ourselves to get rid of something when we don't feel ready to. You know what I mean? It's kind of like taking baby steps. We don't want to force a little a little baby to start walking and running before it's even ready to get to its feet. You know, that's a recipe for it hurting itself. We want to be just as gentle with ourselves, okay? Treat yourself like your own child, your own inner child, access that inner child and treat yourself with gentle, loving kindness. Realize we don't have to get rid of everything all at once. Nothing bad's going to happen if we um, take our time. And I think there's a lot to be said for taking your time with these processes and not just allowing them to become a ritual that doesn't have meaning because when we just start decluttering or giving things away, donating things, cleansing our homes just to follow someone's step-by-step -step guide, we're not really doing it for the right reason. And that's when we can feel emotional hurt because it almost seems like we're going against ourselves. We're, we're, doing, we're forcing ourselves and pushing ourselves to do something before we're necessarily ready to do it. And with minimalism, it's better to start the journey slow and steady than rushing in when you're not quite ready. There is no shame in owning things or even owning what you might view as too many things. Take your time with it. Really figure out what is no longer serving you. And what emotions do we have attached to the things in our lives? That can be a very valuable thing to start delving into and discovering. And if we go through the process too quickly, we miss all that goodness. We miss the emotion that we feel. And often there we'll discover a lot of good emotions that we have for the beautiful things in our lives, the things that we have so much gratitude for. Let's not miss out on that by just pushing our way through this process of decluttering too quickly. 
So this is kind of a simple concept. It might seem like a bit of a no brainer, but when I began minimalism, it wasn't something I thought about a lot. I kind of compared myself to other minimalists. I watched other videos and looked at the amount of things others, other people owned and thought, wow, I should really get rid of more things because maybe this isn't the right level of minimalism. But as I've grown and journeyed deeper into this practice, I've come to realize that that doesn't matter. It really is a very personal journey exploring not only the things that we own and why we own them, but what is our relationship with those things? How does it reflect who we really are? What are the things that we can express more gratitude for? And what are the things that we have too much of and we can let go and serve, allow those things to serve someone else in a, in a positive way? So, I just wanted to, to sit down and kind of puzzle this out for myself aloud. I am a very uh, verbal person with a communicating thought, and I wanted to share these thoughts with you guys and see what you thought of them because we've been journeying through a lot of concepts about minimalism lately. And I think decluttering is a big topic <laughs> that comes up a lot in the minimalist uh, world, in the minimalist realm online. Everyone wants to know how to declutter. I want to know how to better declutter and tidy and take care of my things and let go of things that aren't serving me. But at the same time, how can I do so more mindfully with um, pacing myself? with paying attention to what I'm feeling and what emotions are arising as I go about this practice. I don't want to just bulldoze my way through it. I want to treat myself gently. Don't feel like you have to follow some rigid, strict, grab the trash bag and start ripping through your closet. <laughs> you, you, can, um, you can take your time. You know, there's, there's no rules. There's no one looking over your shoulder wagging their finger at you if you keep an extra shirt, you know. It's, it's about finding what truly serves you and treating yourself with loving kindness. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I would absolutely love to hear them. I would love to hear your thoughts on decluttering. What is your method? How do you go about it? Um, if you are a practitioner of minimalism or mindfulness, how do you go about tidying your things and looking after what you do own? How do you, how do you ex express gratitude for it on a daily basis? I would love to hear that. Gratitude practice is something I want to sink into more in the coming year. And that's part of why I wanted to make this video too, is as we wrap up the year, a lot of us are focusing on how can we start the new year, maybe letting some things go or inviting something new into our lives. So I think decluttering and tidying and straightening out our lives is something a lot of us are thinking about right now. So dump all your thoughts below. I'd love to hear them. If you liked this video and if you are enjoying this series, it always means the world to me when you click subscribe, ring the bell, share this video with a friend. If you feel moved to support the channel, the best way to do that is to either join my Patreon, pick up one of my books, you'll find the link below, or pick up something from my Etsy shop. I create boho jewelry, not this hair tie, but these boho bracelets and necklaces and bookmarks. Those are more of a limited thing, but from time to time I make some bookmarks and have those there as well. Thank you so much for being here, my friend. I wish you so much joy in your journey. I will see you in the next video. Namaste.